And welcome to St. Louis Park High School Stadium for tonight. West Met Metro West conference match between the St. Louis Park Orioles and the Cooper Hawks. This is Ira Gerwitz along with John Huber bringing you tonight's match. I'm going to quickly get the starting lineups in before the game starts and then we'll uh, have a little discussion about tonight's match. First of all, for Cooper Hawks, starting in goal, number zero, Nick Winter. Number two, Sam Boku. Number four, Alex Da. Number six, Emmanuel Balogun. Number seven, Sebastian Pino, Pino Peralta. Number eight, Isaiah Duke. Number 11, Jude Wood. Number 14, Andrew Fitzsimmons. Number 15, Matthew Lahman. Number 17, Eddie Ogamba. And number 18, Loresto Banks, the head coach for Cooper Hawks, is Cameron Opal. For the St. Louis Park Orioles in goal, number one, the junior goaltender, Eric Hendricks. Number two, Brian Brito. Number three, Abdi Ibrahim. Number six, Max Kent. Number seven, Joe Brandel. Number 10, John Kinney. Number 11, Michael Perez. Number nine, Malik Grays. 16, Daniel Decker. And number 18, Chris Trotter. And I got it in before the start of the game. That's that was good, good work. Yeah, so didn't beautiful. We're gonna have enough time to get that done. Right? Yeah, I didn't think so either. But so here we go. There you go. Beautiful night here. Sun's back out, and uh, Cooper's got the ball. Should be a good match tonight. Cooper four and two coming into this matchup, and uh, I think St. Louis Park's what three two and two. Uh, you know, I don't recall. I'm sorry. They are. So should be a good matchup. Two good teams. Now, if we could just see the field through the sunlight, we'd be okay. A little contact there in midfield. Uh, goes back over to Park. Joe Brando. Oh, grab there by Decker, gets away with a hold and Neil's had the ball, but Cooper comes away with it. Good battle here the midfield. Uh, Cooper takes control and uh, tries to set up their offense. Sends it up the left side. Number 14's got it for Cooper. Andrew Fitzsimmons plays it in, and Eric, good job there on the goal. Yeah, did a nice job going up high, pulling it out at the top of the box area. Ball comes up. Okay, turnover right now. Break for the Orioles. Can they put it in? Oh, John oh. Kenny, good try there. Good try. Keeper Dole got a hand on it. It's going to be a corner kick for St. Louis Park. Boy, got away there, real nice. Had a good open look at it and keep a guest right on the dive. Good play by the goalie there for uh, for Robinsdale Cooper. Nick Winter. And that I can't tell who that is taking the goal kick. Is it Brito? Or the corner kick rather. Joe Brandau comes in and puts his head on it. Park uh, keeping it in. Decker fighting for the balls, got it still. Puts it down deep and a little too far for the Orioles. Kenny. Kenny can't keep it in. Nice little uh, combination down there, though. Yes, it was. And Decker did a fine job just fighting to keep possession of it in the corner there. Let's see if Park can keep it in the zone and uh, keep their offense uh, in motion. I'm happy in about five minutes here. I think I'll actually be able to see what's happening on the field with the sun. <laughs> yeah, the sun will go down uh, too early. Yeah. Seems, li again. seems like we were able to play golf and relax until 9, 9.30 just a few weeks ago. And I know I was commenting at home the other night. I go, wow, it was just before 10 o'clock, and now it's before 8 o'clock. It's dark. Malik gets a foot on it. But Well, it's homecoming week here for the Orioles, and a couple of a couple of gentlemen here on the the boys' soccer team uh, 
on the homecoming court. So congratulations to them and uh, good luck tomorrow night in the football game. Yeah, well, the Oriole girls set the table now for the rest of the teams. They uh, pulled off the victory in the first game. Hopefully the boys can follow up and do the same this evening. Good play there by Malik to dispossess him. Kenny. And finally, Cooper gets possession. In the corner, the Orioles get it to the top of the box area, drop it back on defense. And now Brandell with the ball. Plays it out on the left wing. There for Gray. Decker. Okay, they come to the middle and uh, good play in there by Michael Perez. Joe plays it out wide. Back to Max. Oh, nice switch. Abdi. Oh, right on front, score! Oh, great score there. Great score by Abdi. Nice combination play there by the Park Orioles and uh, uh, wonderful shot. We'll take another look at it right here. Here you can see Abdi just put it back and. Was that Kent? That I think that was that? Max. Yep. I've been calling him Decker the whole time, but that's six is Max Kent. Not 16, Decker. The assist went to number three, Abdi Ibrahim. Time that goal was 5.05. Kent stabs for the ball, knocks it out away from the Cooper player. This ball again. Kent back, heels it forward. There's a trip and no call. And the keeper picks up the ball. We'll clear it out We're on a punt. That might have been Connor Bellingham on the goal, but uh, we'll, get, we'll get it confirmed here at halftime. All right. Might have been number four, but uh, we'll check on that. Good play by Park in general, though. Cooper playing out here wide. Number six controlling for them, Emmanuel Belligan. Correction on the goal, number four, as you said, Connor Bellingham. The only reason I knew was the difference in height. Certainly both great players and uh, good work there by Park to get that score. I couldn't see over everybody else's head. <laughs> Trotter brings it up. Right on the goal line. Oh, flexed off the keeper and off the goal post. Good looking play there though by, uh, by Trotter bringing it up and uh, making something happen. Well, I guess maybe it didn't touch the goalkeeper and they're giving him a goal kick. Number six, Emmanuel Balagan will be taking the goal kick. You know, Park's got a good size midfield. Oftentimes you don't find uh, the kind of uh, young boys we have with uh, that kind of size and speed, and they work well together. Chris Trotter, Max Kent. Yeah, they do have some good height and that shot was 
out for a goal kick. Certainly Malik and Abdi too. I mean, they just work well together as a group. Randell steps up nicely, clears it out of danger, nice. carries it, delivers it in the center. Just can't. Nice play by Joe. Gets there. Foul called. Chris Trotter there again coming through and uh, just catching him with the body. Way wide of the goal out of. Play and it'll be a goal kick for the Orioles. Eric Hendricks back in after having injury earlier this season. I don't know, did he play the last game on the road? Or? No, he didn't. So this is his first game back after the last few. So good to see. Now Eric in his junior year already. Yes, TJ Renford did a good job of you know, stepping up when uh, Eric went down, but two good goalies. Nice luxury to have. Yes, it is. Oh, that one's not called. Uh, Max trying to control it there at midfield, but uh, got it back. And he keeps fighting for the ball. And defensive players draw a nice back heel by Max, but it was stolen away by the Hawks. Max gets it back. Stays with the play. Doesn't give up. And played out of touch by the Orioles for a throw in. Pretty evenly matched so far. It's been a good battle. Yes. The Parks had more opportunities, but uh, you can see why Cooper's four and two. Yeah, they've it's been going end to end. It was another long shot that. Oh, a little shove there at the end there. It didn't get called. Uh, nice kick by Eric. Kent. He's dispossessed of the ball. Decker loses it. And now here comes a opportunity for Cooper, but broken up with a touch there by the Orioles. Good, Decker. Joe got it, and uh, nice, nice play there. Can Kent switch it right it. there and Kent sees it. He needs to get it a little bit wider. Abdi can move though and a uh, little bit wider and it, that would have been there. So yep. good thought. Ibrahim takes the throw in. Back to Ibrahim. Cross out front, breaking was Malik Grays and it's punched away by the goalkeeper. Malik was on it. Uh, could have come into uh, to Max as well. S throw in for Cooper. And that was touched out or deflected out by Kent. That was out over the touch line, so it's an Oriole throw in. Long throw to the middle, a portion of the field. Knocked away by the Cooper defense. Randell heads it. And then Decker headed it up the line. And now Trotter plays it into the middle. Perez has got space. Gets it right back off the deflection. Oh, nice touch. Oh, Malik had it, but good, good combination there. Kent had another nice little tip, puts it into the scoring position. Malik uh, just a touch late, but uh, it's a good sign there for Park. They need to keep that positive play up. Absolutely, you're correct. With a long ball. Joe playing good position defense there. 
A little give and go, and Eric's there to stop it. Yeah, I thought it was over the goal line before it came to Eric, but sure enough, now it's a goal kick. Eric had a, uh, have a hamstring or some tendonitis or something like that with his leg. Seems like he's kicking the ball just fine. Put that up to the 50-yard line. So, yeah, I don't recall what it was that was hampering him, but Chris, is, Chris has got it in the uh, open field here. Can they control it? Got it back to the middle. Tried to play it over to Kent. But Tipped away by the defense. Now it's oh, in the box. Go. Oh, that's still in possession, and Kinney just finally turns and rolls out of touch, or over the goal line rather, for for a goal kick. Second time there for Kinney. Uh, maybe third time will be a charm. Uh, he had uh, he had the keeper where he wanted him, but just couldn't get the shot away. Well, we can't blame the sun. The sun's no, just going down no. and. Uh, Good playing conditions tonight, actually. It's perfect for soccer. Like I said, in, during the girls' game earlier, earlier this evening, we are just not used to it yet because it's been a quick transition to fall from a warm summer season. But Good pass ahead there by Decker. We're going to have a corner kick for the Orioles. Malik's going to take it. See if we can get one here. We've been putting pressure on them pretty pretty well here the last 15 minutes. Going to the fire post, too far, and it's a goal kick. They had the play on. They had Max Kent coming in on the backside of the far post, and uh, Malik bent it in there relatively well, and uh, just a little too far. Three subs coming into the game for the Orioles. And number eight, Nicholas Owens, one of them. The Jackson Eilers. And number 17, John Chatea. That was impressive. I uh, just don't know if I could. Chatea? Uh... <laughs> I've had the experience of announcing that one before. <laughs> The toughest one I ever had over all the years <laughs> actually was in basketball. And Ziggy Mazapo. I don't know if you remember him. Uh, Ziggy, Ziggy, Ziggy. Mm -hmm. He was uh, he was a golfer. I remember. Yep, he played for Mound, I believe it was, and I had to announce a section basketball game, and I go, how in the world do you say this one? Ernest Ziggy Mazapo, wasn't it? Was and Ziggy Mazapo. Okay, that's all right. He was quite the player, too. Yeah, he was. He was a project, but uh, he certainly blossomed for the Gophers. Yes, he did. He was great in high school. Of course, then I did uh, boys section soccer last year, I believe it was, in like Minneapolis South. Those names were, as a team, were <laughs> the toughest ever. A couple tongue twisters for you? Yes. Yeah, wow. Better you than me, that's what I say. Free kick coming up here for the Hawks. Joe's been playing well back there, anchoring that defense and making it happen. Chris Trotter, see what they can make happen here. Yeah, Brandell has been really solid all season back there. I think other than the first Oriole game at home, I think which was their first game of the season where there was a lot of breakdowns with breakaways on the defense. Other than that, I think they made a really nice adjustment in the second half. That was against Wyzetta. And since then, every game I've seen them play, they've played extremely well on defense. Well, and well coached, too. I mean, Chato does a great job with these guys. And, yeah, he know, knows a little bit about it. He's got a system, and he knows what they need to do, and they know what they need to do. And yeah. it seems to work pretty well here at St. Louis Park. And if I remember, there was quite a few seniors on last year's team. That's and true. So it was almost like a rebuilding, but again, some great training, and, and they've become a, a pretty solid team, so it's nice to see. Well, I remember last year, too. I mean, really close. I mean, North St. Paul taking the championship, which was great to see. Always love to see the underdog win. Yeah. Certainly as a St. Louis Park fan, I certainly love to see that. And uh, 
Uh, great game there. I mean, we lost at at North St. Paul 1-0 uh, to the ultimate state champ. So great team last year, good team this year, and, uh, you know, growing. So who knows what happens by sectionals. And the year before, if I'm not mistaken, Park Boys were in the final of the sections also. They, cer they certainly were. Yeah, it's not where you start, it's where you finish. Absolutely, you can have that slow start, but if you're building, and that's why they have the playoffs and everybody's eligible, because a team that can get it together by the end of the season should have the same opportunity at the state as the team that got the hot start and Absolutely. stayed hot all season. Absolutely, we won uh, state my senior year in uh, the other football. American football, and I remember we started one and two, and ended up going undefeated and winning the whole thing. Yeah. And uh, it, uh, yeah, things change. People grow, and especially at this age, these kids are just learning how to play together. Yeah, for sure. Play as a team. I know being involved with the Minnesota youth soccer with the bracketing for playoffs and and uh, some of the coaches, even sometimes the parents, they can't understand why we're letting those low teams come in and play and, and so on, get seated into the tournament. And, you know, and what you've got to explain is, hey, you know, they could have had a rough start and they got it together and now they're just as good as anybody else. They need to have a fair chance. Some of them like to just see the top four teams advance into a playoff. Yeah, that's no fun. No. it up. Perez brings it in and turns it over. Cooper's got it. Let's see what they can do with it. There really hasn't been a lot of scoring chances yet for uh, for uh, for Cooper. Maybe one or two yeah. opportunities. But Eric Hendricks equal to the task out there and coming up with the stops. Randell plays it out to middle of the field. Too far for Trotter. Out of touch, an Oriole throw in. And here comes the clock, clock being stopped. Yellow card for delay of game, I believe. Well, he may be just gonna talk to him, but he definitely should know better. Yeah, just a, a verbal warning, but uh, Definitely could have been a yellow card to the player for delaying the game, throwing the ball down the field after he knew the throw-in was coming right up where he was. Graham Larson playing good defense there, just come in the game. Throw-in for Park. This is like looking through frosted glass right here. <laughs> Old equals frosted. Yeah, it needs some new glass, I think. Yeah. Times are tight. Probably it's not going to happen in a few years. Just make sure the busted part doesn't, uh, you know, hit you if you, you know, yeah, it's too hard there. Right? Exactly. Okay. It's like somebody had a fun time in that. <laughs> Good play there by Trotter, getting up high to uh, keep that ball. Okay, here we go, open field, Chris Trotter. Cuts away from the defenders, goes around, plays it out wide, and the Orioles are not able to keep it in. Jonathan can't keep it in. It was a good idea, played it out, and he was being, uh, forcing the play by the, or forced in the play by the defender, and he laid it out wide on a, corner run for the attacker. Yeah, that last touch was just maybe a little too long, but uh, but uh, good idea. And Jonathan Chichetta was almost there. And knocked out a touch by Perez.
Whoa. No foul called again. Ah, Park players down there. Miguel Ocampo going down, but back in, fighting again. Graham comes up and gets it, gets it to Jonathan. And there's another, the same type of foul again. I think it's yeah. the same player who did yeah. that too. Ref wants to make sure he gets this uh, taken care of here early so things don't escalate. Pretty clean game earlier with the girls. Uh, I'd like to see the same thing with the guys. Don't want to see people get hurt. Well, that's for sure. We got They always got to remember, and it's tough for kids or even adults to remember it's a game. You know, just enjoy it, play it fair, and work hard, and hopefully the best team wins. Well said. That's. That uh, comes with age. <laughs> <laughs> Wisdom. Yes. Good play there by uh, by Ocampo, keeping uh, keeping uh, Park uh, with it. Park throwing. Nikki Owens battling. Mason Eiler heads it in, or throws it in rather for header. And Cooper content to just kick it out of danger again. Smart play by Jackson there, throwing it into a place where Perez with a shot. And a save by Winter. Good strike there. Good save. Graham Larson played it up the line. Ah, played it out on the left wing. Cooper gets past the defense to see if they can make something happen. Long but ball. With Eric and goal. He's on it. Quickly got rid of it, and the Orioles go on the counterattack. That's Trotter. Chris Trotter. Two of them on him. One takes the inside route, and the other right behind him. And then Trotter puts pressure could be a corner here. Yes, it is. He did a good job of pressuring the defender who coughed it up out over the goal line. That's number six, Balagun, who, oh, now they've changed the call. And they're saying it's a goal kick. I did think that Balagun did knock it out and just felt the pressure, but obviously one of the officials didn't agree. Trotter's showing his speed there. He's done that on a couple of occasions. Yeah. Maybe he got his shoelace stepped on. <laughs> well, that, uh, that could work out here for Park. They get a chance. Oh, great John shot. Kinney. Oh. <laughs> Third time's a charm for Mr. Kinney. At 26-10, John Kinney with the goal, as you said. Here's another look at it right here. The assist from Cooper, huh? <laughs> he take that all the way, or was there a good assist there? Well, I, I missed that one also. I'm sorry, I was writing down here, couldn't see the replay. Well, great play there. Uh, just again. got headed the wrong way, and here it comes. Yeah. Well, I couldn't tell from the replay, but we don't care. It's 2-0, and that's what matters. That is what matters, so. Man, it's throwing again for the Orioles. That one was knocked out by Fitzsimmons. It actually looked like he used a handball to knock it out, too. But. Who got the first goal, Ira? The first goal was Connor uh, Bellingham. Yeah, that was a good, good goal there. Yep. Well, Campo plays it wide to the right. Ball played in to the Orioles zone. And then Brandell plays it back in the middle. Perez gets it off to Potter. Chris. 
Here's Decker over to Brandel. Back to Perez. Ocampo. Nice yeah. little flick to the side for Trotter. <clears throat> Play continues as both players have players going down. Dell, Brandel, Campo, Campo, Perez. Long shot. Feeling it. Just wide right, or we would have had three points. Yeah, you're putting it on goal, good things happen. Park playing well. Yes, they are. Again, we're seeing uh, not quite as much edge as we saw in the girls' game, but still a, a somewhat edge on the Orioles' possession in the Cooper zone. Certainly, and I mean, you look at Park. You know, coming into it with a record that you know didn't match Cooper, I expected this to be a pretty close game, and Parks uh, pretty much uh, controlled it from the outset. Really haven't seen many opportunities for Cooper, so got to keep the pressure on. A lot of time left. Nothing real close, at least by Cooper. Everything's been from long range, where the Orioles have been in the penalty area and had some opportunities several times. Oop. Foul called against the Orioles. Interference there on the throw? -in? Something like that. You well, know, it couldn't be that or it'd be a throw in again. So there must have been a push or a hold or something out there. Can't get it off and goes in, steals it. Eddie Ogambo trying to keep control there for Cooper, but it's back over to Park. Perez gives it to Ocampo. Nice little layoff there. Orioles doing a good job keeping possession. Decker, good service in. Nice idea. Jackson, smart player. Jackson's a smart player. Nice little combination play there as the Orioles almost got loose into the penalty area again. Smart kid, too. Jackson's been taking college classes since he was a freshman. Oh, yeah? So I don't know him personally, so. Very nice. Very nice family. Good battle in there. Yes, it was. Kept fighting. Can't Ian Lockhart making it happen for Park. Turns it back over. Cooper. Joe's back there. Nice little cut. Turns up the middle and then plays it up. He was hoping to get. Looked like a handball there, but uh, Perez is on it. He's been all over the field. Back to Decker. Kent turns. Breaking man on the right side. That Lockhart again. That's Lockhart again. A nice, you know, nice thought there by uh, by Max. Here we go. Play on. Oh! One time. Oh, no. Oh. oh, golden opportunity. Just casually played it into the goal and didn't have enough on it. Jackson was there, but uh, just, uh, just didn't happen. Uh, looked like an open goal, but uh, good play there by the goalie to get back in that, I guess. Abdul Tovar Toledo. That's another tongue twister for you. Yeah. Decker heads back. Nice play there. Joe really keeping that defense solid and strong. Graham plays it up. Rebounds right back to the Orioles. And a foul called. Well, Nicky gets fouled by uh, number 14, uh, Andrew Fitzsimmons for the Cooper Hawks. Eight minutes left here. Like, nice to see uh, Park up 2 nothing. Let's see if we can get one more. 
He dispossessed Kent. But the Orioles keep fighting, get it back. Decker, down the middle. I'll play on. Matea has it knocked out. And it'll be a corner kick with seven and a half minutes. Good remain. play there by Jonathan to kind of force the tempo there. There really wasn't anything happening outside of him. And he, he just kept going up that left side and, and, and seeing if something good would happen. And who knows, maybe it happens right now. And there it is to the far post side, up in the air to flex off and clear it out of danger. But the Orioles get it about 30 yards out. Shot deflected by number six. Balagun and giving the Orioles another corner kick. Good play there too, just put it on net. Everybody was down in the zone anyway. Keep them on sides and put it on net. Driving ball up, deflected from the near side by the defense. Defense hustling back. And Decker recovered nicely. The rest of the team is back to help out. It's a tough ball in, handled well by Joe Brandel. Again, the defense steps in front of Odamba. Good play coming in there by Ian Lockhart, just a 10th grader. Playing that right wing position, uh, back uh, defensive midfield. He's uh, done a good job. Ooh, good play by Perez. Good play by Perez. Yep, he was uh, contested, and he did a nice job of hanging on to it. Here we go. Kent plays it up to Perez. Has it knocked away. Lockhart. His crossing pass broken up, but rebounds to the Orioles. Decker's got it. And it'll be a throw in once again for the Orioles deep in Cooper territory. Good pressure by Ocampo. Joe serves it back to Eric. Eric up to Graham. Good recovery by Graham over to Decker. Nice ball in through and oh, Jackson uh, just a little off there, but uh, good idea there by uh, uh, by uh, by the team. Cooper subs number eleven Wood and number sixteen Abdul Abdul Rahman in for Cooper. There's a fight for the ball. Ocampo, he's holding it. And finally knocks it out of touch. Nope, here comes an opportunity. 14 comes Cooper. through. Andrew Fitzsimmons. Jackson's there. Nice job by the Oriole defense. Perez gets it out to Kent. Lots of room. Nobody's well, finally they Jonathan's to close. there. Taylor, will he get a shot? No, he drops it on top of the box. Lockhart pressuring. Played in and a shot. It was going wide, I think, but the goalkeeper dove, tipped it out, give the Orioles a corner kick with under four minutes remaining in the first half. Good ball there by Nicky. Uh, Nice and flat, low to the right, hard for the goalie to get. Um, really, the only place that, uh, the only place uh, to go there, and uh, almost went in. Low driving corner kick. So back by Jackson, Decker serves it up to Perez. We're back on offense. A long clearing attempt out of touch. Throw in coming back again for the Orioles.
Good play there by 11. Jude Wood. Perez finally, well, almost stole it. Looked like he was finally gonna get the steal. Play some good defense here going into the half. Uh, throw in. Yep, Clark, very satisfied with playing that one out of danger. Cooper had somewhat good period of time of possession there while they were both scrambling, trying to get it out of Fancy footwork there by Jude Wood. Free kick coming up for the Hawks. Jones getting the defense set. It's really the first uh, offensive opportunity with any structure for Cooper. Let's see what happens. Get it, and they score. <clears throat> Looks like number 10, William Dominiquez. We'll take another look at it right here. Is that number 10? Well, we can't see the 16 number here, maybe. Jafar Abdul Rahman. Number 16 on the goal. That's another tongue twister for you, Ira. Jafar Abdul Rahman. Well, let's see if I can shorten it up. <laughs> Jaffe. <laughs> I don't the think I can. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you said it. I won't repeat it. All I can tell you is the time of the goal was 38.05. I think Jafar, uh, from a far away uh, place, he uh, headed that in. It was a beautiful goal. And that's something that the Orioles did not want to have happen in the last couple of minutes of the no. match. It really controlled everything for, during the first half. And uh, let's see what happens here, what they do with this little adversity. You take away the, that very early goal by the Orioles, and it was a really 1-1 match from there on. I think possibly Isaiah Duke, number eight, may have been the one who got the assist on that goal. Okay. Oh, nice play forward there. Let's see what. Uh... Well, they say it went off the Oriole player, so it's going to be a Cooper throw in with about 30 seconds remaining in the first half. I uh, Nikki had that, but uh... Jackson plays it in. Nikki's got another shot. Perez played it into Ocampo. See what happens. Kent with a shot. That's deflected out front. And an easy save for Winter. And just take his time putting it back in play as the buzzer's going to sound momentarily here. And there it is. So, San Luis Park dominating most of the first half, but as lots of times happen, you can dominate, dominate, and dominate, and then the team gets one chance, and they put it in the net, but. Jafar did a good job on that on that cross, put it in the back of the upper right-hand side of the net. Eric's a good goalie, but uh, great goal. Got to tip your hat to Cooper when they got the opportunity, they scored, but good half for St. Louis Park. Yep, and to, rec to re recap the scoring at 5.05, Connor Bellingham scoring for the Orioles. The assist going to number three, Abdi Ibrahim. At the 26-10, number 10, John Kinney scoring unassisted to make it 2-0. And then at 38.05, number 16, Jafar Abdulrahman uh, with the assist going to Isaiah Duke to make the score 2-1. That's where we stand here at the end of the first half. And we'll be back with the second half of action in just a few moments. The following is a public service announcement test to determine if you need a fishing license and boat registration before you head out on the water. Let us begin. Are you your own boat? Is this your idea of fishing with friends? 
Do you want this in your favorite lake? It. Regardless how you answered, you need to be licensed and registered. Do your part at TakeMeFishing.org. And we're back for the second half of the Metro West Boys Soccer Match between the home team St. Louis Park Orioles and the visitors Cooper Hawks. 2-1 the score. The Orioles in the lead and dominating this game for the most part, John. Great first half, great first half. And, you know, outside of a late score, which was just a good play off of a corner, uh, Park's, uh, Park's been in uh, good shape. Yep, we'll see if they can maintain here now. I was just talking to one of the parents of one of the players and just saying how this team is really starting to come together, being uh, that they're pretty much a new group. You know, the last couple of years, a very experienced group that had played together for years. That's right. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, Chato's going to get these guys primed. And, uh, uh, you know, I think uh, their defense is strong and, uh, and midfield's working hard. Uh, you know, good, good things to come. Yeah, a lot, a lot of skilled players. There's no doubt about that. So, like I said, the key, you know, getting them to play together and, uh, you know, uh, maxing out right at the right time at the end of the season when you want to play your best. And so hopefully that's what will happen. I agree. Jude uh, Wood has uh, shown some skills out there today. Uh, scored off the, uh, I believe he scored off the header, uh, didn't he? Uh, was it Wood for, uh, no, that was Ibrahim. Yeah, that's uh, for, but uh, so definitely good play through here. Yeah, with Jafar Abdul Rahman that scored on that. Okay. Well, I uh, thought maybe John Kinney was going to get to that one and have another shot, but uh, good defensive uh, pressure there by Cooper. Oh, play through here. Kenny again. Shot is Oh, I uh -oh. thought that was going in. It's a great, great hesitation move. Did it inside of the foot or outside of the foot, moved to the left and cleared some space. And good play there by the goalie. Uh, had a couple of those. Abdul Tobar Toledo. Yep, just getting his hand on it, deflecting it wide. There's another opportunity. Can't get all of it and cleared out by Cooper. Nice play top of the box and a oh. header. Great. Just high and wide by Kent. Great try by Max. Good ball in there by Chris. Well, the Orioles are coming out the way they need to. They really are. Put some pressure on Cooper, much like the first half. It's nice to have the, that kind of size in the midfield. We talked about that a little, little bit earlier about Chris and Chris Trotter, Max Kent, um, you know, win a lot of balls in the midfield. Yeah. First to the ball matters in soccer. Absolutely, the, the long legs to get there and the height to hit them. Well, and the strength to hold your position too. Yes, that's true. There was Trotter. Trotter coming again. Nice pass. Right there to Kent, the two guys we're talking about. Oh. Decker. Just high and wide. Good combination there, though. It's nice to see Max lay it off to his teammate and let him have a shot, open shot at that goal, and uh, that's the key to success, right? Absolutely, Share, teamwork. Sharing that football, yeah. Yep. As the old saying goes, the old cli cliche, there's no I in team, so. <laughs> Decker. Oh, he shielded it, and it was miscommunication there. Uh, lucky that wasn't a foul. Uh, I guess, you know, Graham and uh, Joe back there just need to communicate about what's happening. And, you know, it's like boxing out in basketball. You've got to keep your body on the guy yep. if you're going to do it. Another intercepted pass by Cooper. And it's going to be a throw in for the Orioles as they tried to clear it to the far side and played it too far for their teammate.
There's another long shot. Oh, and he scores! Max. That's a great, great score there by Max Kent. Great score there. And, you know, just another example there of, you know, putting it on goal. If it doesn't go in, uh, maybe it comes a rebound off the goalie or, or the or the you know, the frame. And, and But, boy, what a shot. Yeah, perfectly. It just took a dip right under the crossbar. Not going to see a better one than that. Great shot there, Max. I don't know if somebody passed it to him first. Uh, I can't recall. Oh, there we see it right there. I uh, can't tell who that is, but it was a nice drop pass back. And a great shot to the far. Kinney coming in. Decker been opportunistic. Gets it to Malik. Actually, Get back on sides. I think right. Gray was the one who passed it to him. I'm going to unofficially give the assist to Malik Gray on that goal. Well, number four is what I'm being told, so Connor Bellingham with the assist. Well, good. that was good by Connor there, but really, I mean, Max uh, kind of just did that on his own. But it was uh, one of those goals you'd like to see time and time again. I'm sure he'll be dreaming about that one. Yeah. It, uh, like I said, it was, it was a bullet, and then it just, that top spin on it just Took it down right, right under the crossbar. Wasn't a lot Winter could do in goal on that one. Great, great play. Except grow a few more inches, maybe. That's probably true. Hard to judge those uh, lights at night. They usually practice during the day. You know, it's sometimes it's hard to pick it up. And here we got another shot. <laughs> another goal. He does it again. Uh, it's really been fun to watch him grow over the last few years. He's. Turned into quite the goal scorer. I think he had two last game as well. So um, Benji Kent, his dad, the coach of the girls, uh, uh, his mom was quite a player too. So uh, you know, Elliot's sister is playing varsity, and she's just in eighth grade. So just, yep. a, just a soccer family. And uh, um, Benji, a former park player, and I believe Chris was an Edina player. Well, there you go. Let's keep them at park, right? Keep them at park. Let's keep those jeans right here, right? So. Yep. I don't know if I could tell who passed that one to him, but. Free kick coming up here for Boku. Well, sometimes you're just feeding it, so I guess my offensive suggestion would be, uh, why don't you feed Kent? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he's got the moves, he's let's, got the strong shot. Let's get the hat trick. But right now, I think the key thing that they gotta be telling them is, you know, just or thinking to themselves is, nice nice move there by Abby. And then played out of touch by a Cooper, be a throw in for the Orioles. Yes, yeah, so the Orioles remember that la uh, the last game, Tuesday yeah. night, they were had 3-0 and ended up getting tied 3-3 and finally having to win in overtime. So I don't think they want to have another letdown like that. No, got to keep the proverbial foot on the throat. And uh, it's plays like that by Decker. He's been hustling really all night, doing a good job there, uh, doing the little things that make a difference. A little too much body there by Graham. Uh, turnover and uh, foul, uh, free kick, Cooper. Had it out. Uh, shouldered out there by uh, number 17 for Cooper, Eddie Ogamba. And he takes the shot and an easy save for Eric Hendricks. Brandel. Nice, nice, long ball up. nice angle ball there. Way to slip that through there. And we get a corner kick. Good job there. Double teaming by the Orioles down in the corner. A lot of, a lot of body contact down there, but 
the officials let it go and Some grabbing and hitting Sam Boku actually did a good job there in my opinion uh, for Cooper uh, really holding this position and uh, uh, you know keeping him out of there but uh, you know, we get the call so uh, here we go Decker taking the corner kick driving it low there's a quick turnaround shot Connor almost uh, got that in snuck that in again almost right hand side low right hand side okay potential here uh, Nice slide tackle there on defense. I'd be working hard. Here come the Orioles again. Nice ball played in. They play it wide. Let's see what Abby can do with this. Keeps it in. Nobody there though for Park. Played off and again. It's an Oriole throw in. Trotter takes the throw, a short throw, drops it back to Trotter. Yeah, I'd like to see Chris throw that in there. Let's see what happens. Uh, nobody there on the left side. Yep, back close. But. Again, this half here, early in it, 10 minutes in, and not even 10 minutes, the Orioles have captured a three goal margin. Decker bringing it up. Connor Billingham's there. Nice slip move. And that one just misses wide left. Shots on goal were definitely, definitely have to be almost a three, four to one margin. Yeah, at least. without a doubt. Goalies had some nice saves. We've had some unfortunate misses. In fact, uh, outside of that corner kick, they really. They haven't really tested Eric. They really haven't tested Eric. There's yet. been a few that were in the box. He came out high to get him, but not really, not really much of a test. Where the winter, the goalkeeper for Cooper has been tested a lot this evening. Ibrahim has it knocked off, but out of play off of Cooper. Brandell does a good job there of just settling back the D. Graham Larson bringing it up. Gives it to Malik. And the cross in the middle. But Cooper gets to it first. Trotter's got it. Cooper's trying to figure out what to do here. Not a touch. Jude Wood can't control it. And again, another Oriole throw in. Trotter will take the throw. Ibrahim back to Trotter. Okay. Park uh, gains control again. It's just kind of like the girls again. The boys uh, for Cooper, the Hawks just can't seem to keep possession yep. across midfield. There he goes Kent again. Well, he's being grabbed and hung on to, no call. And he still has the ball. And finally a foul call. And I think that's a good example there. You look at number four, Alex Da, good player. But about, uh, I don't know, what'd you say? Six inches shorter, at least, mm -hmm. than uh, Mr. Kent. And, uh, you know, in the end, uh, whether it's at this level or the next level, that's going to serve, uh, that's going to serve Max well. Uh, that size and the skills in the midfield, the ability to score like he has, uh, impressive. And the amazing thing, he was grabbed and pulled and tugged. And then in the end, they called to follow him. That's very true. Still working it. Still working yep. it. Uh, you know, Chattel's got these guys in good shape. Oh, nice spin move. Nice calling him. Well, Park gets a call there and it's justified. It's kind of been growing there. So 
free kick here. We'll see what Joe can do with this. He's got a good leg. Um, could have another spot chance here to go up by four scores. And seven years ago. <laughs> it is a day of history. 9-1-1. Nice little touch. Decker has a man out wide on the right. That Ibrahim was in the trotter and then bounced away from him and then Oriole throw in result. See what Chris can do with this out to Abdi. Good cross. Oh, oh great play. Just a little bit short of reaching the ball on that header and deflects it wide. Team's feeling it right now, and uh, Ira, and so it's fun to watch. Was that uh, Malik that came in there? It looks like it. Just missed getting all of it. But yeah, very, very entertaining game. There's that size going for us again. Just able to win the one-on-ones, you know, that 50-50 battle has been pretty consistent and persistent yes. uh, in terms of winning that football, and uh, it's great to see. A little high kick, yep, and there's the call. And Dangerous. Don't want people to get hurt. Like you said, it's just a game. Absolutely. Joe putting it on here. This could be an interesting play. Those tall midfielders and forwards. Looks like they're going to break to the far post. Yep. Nice kick in. Loose ball off the deflection, and it rolls easy for a save for winner. Yeah, I think Kent John just uh, John just missed that. And Perez has done a good job throughout the game too. Uh, number two, um, just uh, or Brito, sorry, he's done a great job, just con controlling that and uh, nice double team steal there. And a throw in. I'm going to give it to Cooper this time. And substitutions entering the match for both teams. Number 11, Perez, and number 14, Miguel Ocampo in for the Orioles. And we're going to have a throw in coming up for Cooper. I'm looking at 11 2 right there together. I wonder why I got him confused. Yeah, it's, it's easy to do. It sure is. Both of them played a real strong game. Actually, I think I've been impressed with all the players tonight on the field. Everybody's really found their niche and, and playing extremely well. Team breaks free and Eric uh, saves it. Eddie Ogamba puts it on uh, Eric and uh, Eric Hendricks and Eric does a great job. Perez getting chase. Loose ball. Ibrahim defending. Gets a touch on it. Cooper just able to keep it in along the touch line. Nice spin move. Gets around Trotter. All right. Perez has got it here. Miguel Campo. John Kenny coming back, battling. Yeah. No call. And long ball. Easy save for Hendricks, if you want to call it a save. Oh, a little pushing and shoving there, but the Orioles come away with it. It was Connor. Connor, or oh, Connor and Here we go. Offsides. Oh, Kenny had it, but close. Yep. yep. 
Good thought there between those two. Good combination. It's been working all night. That was a nice finish. Trotter cuts Just to his right. Oh, a little behind Ibrahim and it's stolen. Trotter plays it back to Perez. Arm silly. Brito, see, I did the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. And here we go. Malik bringing up the left side. Oh, good pass. Ocampo. Dispossessed. Two on four. Nice time run, but getting there first is Brandell. His speed was able to stay with the attacker. Yeah, Joe does a great job back there, quarterback in that defense. And he's just a junior, so that's good for the Orioles in the future. Yeah, it looks real good. Again, uh, on the park team this year, you've got, uh, what, uh, six, uh, seven? Jeez. And that one's good wide. Group. Good number of seniors this year. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, ten or, eleven. Ten or eleven, yeah, eleven of them. Jeez. So um, <clears throat> it's more than half the roster. So those juniors are getting some That's good right. experience in the right. sophomores. It's a seasoned team here though. Even though we had a lot of some turnover last year, it's definitely a seasoned team, so. Uh, this is the kind of team, though, that, you know, just watch as the season progresses. I see some real good things as we get towards playoff time. They're playing well tonight, played well on Tuesday night. Uh, season's young. I was saying earlier, there, I don't think there's anybody that doesn't have a lot of really good skills out here, so. Well, I think these kids, too, I mean, it's part of the St. Louis Park tradition, but they all like to hang out with each other and their friends, and they do a lot of other sports with each other, so that camaraderie will help them, too. They are sure. you know, good, good communicators, good friends. That's what I loved about the days when I was in high school, and I don't want to say how many years ago that was, but, uh, you know, it was it was all community. It wasn't everyone from all over the place moving in, and, and that, I mean, that has taken away from a lot of, I mean, just about every high school, I'm sure, is that losing that community feeling. It is a pretty special thing here at Park. It's, uh, it's a small community, and, oh, nice pass in there. I know they still get a oh, here we go. Still get a good turnout at football games, but it uh, it's just not the same crowds like years ago uh, basketball games and football games. I mean, I remember being in high school when it was sold out at the high school. They had another section of seating than even what they have now, and it was sold out. And back in even in the early to mid '80s, when the girls basketball team and the boys basketball teams were in the state tournament. I mean, it was, those were full houses. Well, we were a much bigger school back then. Yeah, too. we were. I mean, we, if you think about it. That's um, true. I and mean, the class sizes were much bigger. I mean, our class sizes now are what, three, 350 kids. So and I had almost 800 in mine here. So, and we were three grades instead of four. So uh, it was it was big, but a lot of it, again, also I think has to do with the community. Um, I agree. Being all from St. Louis Park and, and all that, but. All right, here we go. Play on, but. Uh, I'm gonna follow call against the Orioles. Free kick coming up for the Hawks. Referee having a few words. It's Owens, I believe that is. Yeah, Nikki and Alex Dower. I think Nikki was getting held as he was moving through that uh, area and took exception to it. Things happen. Mm -hmm. I thought 
card was correct in, in looking for that throw in. I thought it deflected off of Cooper. But. I thought so too, but substitution uh, coming in here uh, number 18 for Cooper Loricio Banks yep yeah. oh Mr. Banks plays it in nice job Brandell botting the ball getting it in space so he can make a play and then over to Lockhart and Lockhart over to Perez. Perez is that's, uh, body cut down. <clears throat> that's the kind of thing we don't want to see. I think they call it a chop block in the NFL, don't they? Yeah, I think it's outlawed now. Yep. Yeah, touch just a little too long. Trotter's on it. Nice footwork as he maintains possession. And he gets it back again, and then finally a little spin turn, and they call a fall on him. He's uh, he's quick. He's definitely quick. He's got uh, good skills. Uh, just uh, it's hard in that midfield. There's a lot of people around you. Yeah. So uh, here we go. Perez uh, plays it up. Trotter, nice pass up. Jonathan. Ocampo makes a nice little move, and he's tripped, ah. but no call. Wow. Refs are letting him play. Um, let it go, let it go, let it go. Slow it down. Slow it down. Slow it down. Slow it down. 14 minutes left. Yeah, Park's up 4-1. No reason to rush here for them. As they're thinking about it, but uh, I think they were up 3 nothing last game, as I remember, Ira, with yep. maybe 8 or 10 minutes left. And, Gave up three goals in the last seven minutes. And somehow right came back to win in the overtime. And uh, uh, so they probably got that in their mind. Oh, good idea, but a little too too strong a header to try and get it back to Lockhart. Yeah, good idea by Nikki, but uh, just a little too strong. Brito's getting pushed, but he's fighting for the ball. Flex off a Cooper attacker and Orioles get possession. Perez tried to play it up the middle, but that was blocked by Cooper. Well, really nobody there for Cooper. When they do get an opportunity, it's a, somebody on an island. And uh, St. Louis Park's been pretty good at nice play there. Good pass forward by Ocampo. Jonathan's got it. Let's see what happens. drops it back out, but it's cleared by the defense out of touch. Throw in once again for the Orioles. That's good experience though, Jonathan. Uh, let's see, he's just, uh, well, no, Jonathan's a senior, so experienced player for Park. Cooper played it out wide with nobody there, but the fans, and so Orioles got the throw in. Lockhart. Fighting for the ball and forces the ball. Oh, again, the officials rule it the other direction. Ooh, some hands being moved around there, different things happening. At okay, they didn't throw it out. They didn't call it out over the touchline. They called a foul instead. I can live with that one. There you go. Really? Oh, no, it is a throw in. Well, now I can't live with it. <laughs> well, you're going to have to. Yes, uh, I don't have any say in it. The band played on, as they say. So here we go, oh, Chris Trotter we... with the little move. Um, boy, uh, it's getting a little physical out there. Uh, now the official's going to give a card, I believe. <clears throat> Yellow card in violation. What's that number? I can't tell. 16 is it? Yeah, number 16 going off the, f yeah, number, no, number, is that number 15? Matthew Lauman. Okay. Yellow so, card. Yeah, I got a yellow card, not a red, but he's going off anyway, so. In fact, Ira, is that the rule in, uh, in high school? In high school, that's the rule in high school. You don't yep. have to go off in, uh, 
the pros, but you have to go off in high school. Not a bad rule. No, they just don't want tempers to flare and Not a bad rule. so on. So they don't take any chances. I would agree. Let the kids uh, chill out. So getting set up here. Decker's been in most of the game. He's played a good game, Dan Decker here. Uh, looks like he's going to be serving it in. Got our big line up, uh, up top. Uh, got a play on. Short run into the far post. They play it, head it up straight in the air. Tried to get it down on goal, but the defense clears it away. Yeah, Jackson had a shot. Jackson Ellers, but... Um, a little physical out there with uh, 12 minutes left. Just got to keep your cool here and uh, things should work out. There we go, Perez. He's been working hard all night. Be nice to see him get rewarded. Running real hard in the middle of the field. Yeah, Lockhart's pass a little too far for him. Substitutions into the game. Lockhart's just a sophomore. Uh, didn't start the game, but he's played quite a bit. Uh, good looking young player. He has played very solidly. Yeah. Good experience. Senior dominated team for the Orioles. Throws it in. Through ball. And good no call there by the good official. No call there too. Really the only time Joe uh, Joe was challenged there at all during the game. Joe Brandel playing strong in D. You know, he, really all he had was a hand on his back. He didn't push or anything. And no, the player no, just tumbled on his own and tried to buy a ball. Ocampo tried to play that forward and just kind of went out. So throw in now to uh, throw into Cooper. Ten minutes even remaining in the first or second half. And a foul call uh -huh. against Cooper. There we go. Decker's going to play it in. I'm going to give Joe a chance. Back to Decker. Do Campo Perez dispossessed. Emmanuel nice Balloon. Shot. Good play there by Brian Brito. Position defense. Fancy footwork, but to no avail. Lockhart held his ground, didn't let him make a move around him. Jude Wood uh, has been dribbling the ball a lot, but not much has been happening. They just want to build up their time of possession. <laughs> there you go. Stuff the stat sheet. Yep. Long misfired pass. Goes out over the touch line to the far touch. And the Orioles will have the throw in. Yeah, I mean, park spacing, it's passing tonight, Ira. I mean, you look at those things, you know. Uh, you know, just the speed in general and the size. Uh, it's been uh, a little bit overwhelming for Cooper here. Of course, they're playing away from home and St. Louis Park home field advantage, but uh, it's been difficult for them to get anything going consistently on offense. Yeah, but the defense is, like you said, no matter where, not just in the back, but up front, they're constantly double teaming players. Uh, 
just doing a, a nice job of forcing the turnovers and and uh, just playing very solid. Is that TJ in goal or is that Eric? Uh, you know what? That looks like TJ, yep. All right, so TJ Remper in the goal. Let me give a shout out to TJ and his family. Yep. I didn't see exactly what happened there. I was looking downfield. We'll take a look at it here on replay coming up. Mm, looks like he must have gotten clipped in the back side of the ankle. Clock has stopped. Yeah. Wow. And that's a nothing intentional, just no, going after the ball, and that's why you don't see a... That's what's good to see. We yeah. want, want to play a clean game. I mean, things like that are going to happen, but you don't want to have any elbows to the face or anybody breaking a nose or something. And the referee knew it was clean because he didn't have any verbal caution or any conversation with the attacker who, who caught him in the ankle. Not sure who's exactly down on the field, but uh, looks like he is uh, about to get up, so... Number 11. Number 11. That's Jude Wood. There you go. Jude Wood. Played most of the game. Let's hope he's okay. A little slow walking off. Number six, Kent returns to the game. I'm sure, again, in a few minutes after walking it off. He'll be bruised in the morning, but I'm sure he'll be able to walk pretty well later. He's able to walk at a little better pace now than he was when he first got up off the field. Yeah, I think so. It's a little chilly out tonight, but uh, it almost feels warmer now, Ira, than it did an hour or two ago. I don't yeah, know what maybe, it is. Maybe these the, lights. Well, I was thinking maybe the the wind died down a bit. Or yeah, that's something. We'll take it. <clears throat> that's kind of typical what has happened here tonight. Uh, kind of an aimless pass from the midfield, uh, intercepted by Park, and our midfield's just been dominating. Can't. Holding the ball over to Ocampo. Or Perez. Back to Kent. Keeps possession. Looks just around. They, they just cannot dispossess him of the ball. With the, there were, oh, and that's a foul in the box, but There's they don't goal. call it. And that's a great goal there, too. Good play by the team there. And uh, looks like uh, Bellingham. Connor Bellingham put it in. Second of the night, right? For yeah, Connor. it is. So, it's gone up twice, as is Max Kent, so good play there. And Jonathan really making that happen. Um, just hustling on that ball all night, really. He's done a good job. Again, I'm not going to try the last name, but uh, done a great job. Jonathan Chatea. I'm hoping I'm saying that right. Chatea. Five one here. You got six minutes left. Your goal here is basically don't get anybody injured. Exactly. Uh, so uh, as uh, Max brings it up, plays it back to Brian. Yeah, time of possession, Ira. Not maybe a little bit more balanced in this game than the girls, but uh, I mean. What do you think, 65, 70% possession for the boys? Maybe yeah, more? I'd probably say about 65 to 35 in this game. 
I'd agree. Decker bringing it up. As far as, as far as most dangerous plays, definitely on behalf of St. Louis Park's offense. Well, there's uh, emotions tend to run a little hot. And, uh, Sam Boku oh. better be careful there. He's talking too much to the referee. and He's got a lot of motions and gyrations going on with his hand. That's probably not a good thing to do in front of the ref is whip your arms around too much. Uh, mm -hmm. And it looked like he was directing at him. I was surprised he didn't get a yellow card for descent. Yeah. Decker's played a nice game, plays it up. Nice play into the midfield. Again, back to the midfield. Here we go. All over. Max, no. Oh, almost snuck that in there. Jonathan. There's a nice little takeover between Kent and Bellingham. Absolutely. Really look good. They got combinations they have out there right now are, are working real well. Good, good comeback by 17 there for uh, Cooper. Eddie Ogamba played a good game. Um, it's tough. Those park midfielders are tough, and he's hung in there. Played a clean game. Yeah, it's got to you know it's got to be tough when you're being outplayed by a two to one margin in the time. And have to keep on fighting and fighting, and then when you're, you know, you're still not, you're not really in the game when you're down three, four goals late in the game, but they aren't quitting, and that's a good sign. It is a good sign. I mean, late in the first half, uh, if you missed it, Jafar. Oh, help me out. Abdul Rahman scored, but I uh, haven't really seen much of him here in the second half. No, it's I haven't really been... called his name much. Oh, oh, almost. Almost there. We almost had the hat trick there. Uh, Max Kent. Offside, I think, otherwise. Okay. But, yeah, it was offside. Our offense is working tonight, though, and their defense is playing well. Led by Joe and the team, so the group back there. Nice playing by the Oriole Ben. You know what? You will not get an argument out of me. <laughs> Yeah, you would, you'd like them all this way. Absolutely. Especially a game coming into it where, <clears throat> when honestly, I thought it was going to be pretty tight. Yeah, when you were talking the, the records of the teams and so on, it did sound like it probably would be. And the only difference is the Orioles have been able to finish, and Cooper really hasn't had that opportunity other than the one. Yeah, the corner. Yeah. This is maybe their first real opportunity, but again, Joe Brandel, not a problem. Mm -hmm. Pretty solid right in the middle there for them. Yeah. Perez's mm -hmm. path, soft target. Play it ahead here, but uh, shouldn't be a problem for TJ. And nice kick, Teej. it back to TJ and Renfer sends it all the way out past the halfway line. Connor's on it but uh, comes out. Ocampo tracks it down. Plays it into Perez. Bellingham made a nice play there to and now Shatea. Jonathan's due. There it is, a shot. A nice save by Winter to rebound. Oh! And Cooper content to kick it out of play. Well, that was uh, two chances there, but good play by Park. Uh, they didn't score, but boy, they're doing everything else right. That's definitely for sure. There's that rebound. Oh, and he just got his foot on it, Winter, or that was in the net. Well, 
Charlotte trying to push Kent out of the play, but just haven't been successful. Uh, we're just a little stronger on the ball. A little bigger physically, better foot skills, and uh, just better all around team play. They're too long of a, that's a good example. Just that touch just a little too long. And, and they had a nice build up coming, yeah. and, but and nice then they off. ran into Brandell again. Exactly. Better body positioning, getting control of the ball, and good spacing and passing for the St. Louis Park Orioles. Down under 10 seconds remaining. Orioles don't even have to throw it in, and they don't as the final buzzer sounds. Well, a solid played game uh, for the Orioles. Excellent. Good work. Continue to play solidly throughout the season here. And, and they have had their breakdowns. They've made the adjustments afterwards and, and made it uh, a good contest. And tonight, really no contest uh, with the Cooper Hawks as the Orioles win by a score of 5-1. I'll give you a quick recap once again of the scoring in the first half. 5-0-5, Connor Bellingham scoring his first goal of the game. Actually, he got the first goal of the game and the last goal of the game. The assist going to number three, Abdi Ibrahim. At 26-10, number 10, John Kinney scored, making it 2-0. And at 38-05, number 16, Jafar Abdul Rahman scoring the assist going to Isaiah Duke to bring Cooper within one at two to one. But then the Orioles took over in the second half at 44-34, number six, Max Kent scoring his first goal of the evening. Great the goal assist, there. Yes, it was. And the assist going to Connor Bellingham. Then Kent just a minute and 20 seconds later again with a goal. His second of the evening, make it four to one. Then at 67-40, number 15, Matthew Lahman for Cooper Hawks took a yellow card. And then finally, the scoring rounded or ended up at 73-16 as number four, Connor Bellingham, his second of the evening. The assist going to Jonathan Shatea. And the final score, the St. Louis Park Orioles five, the Cooper Hawks one. So the Orioles swept it here tonight with boy, girls and boys soccer. And now it's up to the football team tomorrow That's at right. homecoming. That's right. So, homecoming game tomorrow. So everybody turn out. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's going to be it here this evening from St. Louis Park High School Stadium. This is Ira Gerwitz along with John Huber uh, announcing tonight's game. John, I want to thank you for uh, helping me out here this evening. It's My pleasure. It's been a pleasure working with you. And that's it from Park TV 16. Good night.